what is incomplete dominance incomplete dominance so if you observe the heading clearly the dominant character is not completely expressed therefore it is referred as incomplete dominance observe the parental generation we have taken one red flower we are crossing with white flower red it is totally dominant capital r capital r white recessive therefore small r when we do crossing between red flower and white flower in f1 generation we are expecting a new color that is pink color so this pink color it did not resemble either of the parents but it is in between two the best example to explain this pattern is the dog flower or snap dragon when we do punnett square so when you write a chakkar board capital r small r capital r small r so capital r capital r one red flower again capital r small r so pink color flower again pink one white if we observe clearly phenotypic appearances one red two pink one white and genotypic ratio also one homozygous red flower heterozygous pink flower and one homozygous recessive flower white color and in this case both phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio are same one is to two is to one so both the phenotypic and genotypic ratio are same so this type of inheritance pattern is called incomplete dominance so what does it indicate r was not completely dominate over small r so this made it possible to distinguish a pink color from red and white so this type of dominance we call it as incomplete dominance so in exam if they ask incomplete dominance you can write this chart you can write the flower if you want or else just with the letters you can explain but here you have to mention homozygous dominant red flower homozygous recessive white flower and here heterozygous pink flower in f1 generation so this is about incomplete dominance okay let's take an example of a gene which contains some information to produce a new enzyme there are two copies of the gene two allelic form let us assume normal allele produce normal enzyme so enzyme we know it is required it is much needed for the transformation of substrate normal allele normal enzyme but if the allele is modified it can be responsible for the production of normal enzyme or less efficient enzyme non functional enzyme or no enzyme at all so what happens the modified allele is equivalent to unmodified allele it will produce same phenotype which results in the transformation of substrate okay let us assume we'll assume the first case normal allele normal enzyme modified allele is also same as unmodified therefore it will produce same phenotype which results in transformation of substrate such equivalent allele pairs are very common but just assume if the allele produces a non functional enzyme or no enzyme then definitely the phenotype external character may be affected so the phenotype trait will only be dependent on the functioning of unmodified allele so the functioning allele represents the virginal phenotype that is the dominant allele and modified is termed as recessive therefore in the example above the recessive trait is seen due to non functional enzyme or because no enzyme is produced what is this paragraph is about they are explaining incomplete dominance only 
this is very clear because we are uh, explaining with the help of a color. So when you look at this color, red, white, pink, it's fine. But same concept, they are explaining with the help of an enzyme. Just assume one normal allele, normal enzyme. One modified allele, it may produce normal enzyme or it may produce non-functional enzyme or no enzyme at all. If modified allele matches the normal allele, no problem. Same phenotype, same enzyme, same transformation of substrate. So phenotype, external characters not appear, I mean, not affected. But if the modified allele does not produce an enzyme or it produces a non-functional enzyme, definitely phenotype may be affected. So at that case, the phenotype will completely dependent on functioning of unmodified or normal allele. So this is the concept about incomplete dominance 